Last piece, after you've picked your way through the code in the previous videos, you've got yourself a, um, a chart, a map, you have a, um, you have a um, CSV file of some kind, you've adjusted the code. Let's now look at how you test it. Testing it is actually really simple because all the work is done. Um, the scanner here is about getting input from the console. Test it in the console. Don't test it with the user interface. Test it in the console to make sure it works. It simply has a constructor on the decision map. If you look at the logic of the code, what makes it nice and straightforward to use is that, if I scroll to the top, that's the constructor. All the three steps of connecting, building the list, building the ordered map are all in the constructor, which means that when you're testing it, you just need to run that. If there's an issue, it'll catch it. Then once you've done it, you need to know how to navigate through it. Um, and this code here simply sets out the navigation, checks there's um, always a node, gets the description for the current node, the question. This is a, this little block is if you have no question. You will always, I would hope, have a question. So this if condition and else condition, you can probably strip out. This is the important bit here. You ask the user, console user, for the decision. Depending on the decision, you choose the next node. It then loops back round here and continues. And it's basically an infinite loop unless you hit a null. Um, and you shouldn't really hit a null at all because all the nodes should link up unless there's an end point defined by a null. So the, the real question for you is, how do you design this? Um, what's the easiest way to do it? And uh, this is your starting point. So what I would recommend is you actually open up a Google Sheet or a PowerPoint, uh, not PowerPoint, sorry, if you open up an Excel spreadsheet and you can build this as a spreadsheet. Once you've built your links, what you would do is you would go to the download option and select comma separated file. It's downloaded it there. If I now go to the file, um, it's there. I, I should, in theory, be able to open it up with a, let's just do a text opener and let's have a look what that shows me. Um, let's have a quick glance. Bear with me a second, there we go. Um, no, for some reason that's not, oh, there we go, there it is. So that gives you a comma separated view where you have each line separated by commas. It's not that useful to you. It's much better to open it up in a tool which color codes it so you can check the formatting is right. And if you have a GitHub account, if you load up a CSV file and it's poorly formatted, it will tell you. In fact, I will demonstrate that to you so you can see. So if I go to my GitHub, um, and you can see this for yourself, okay. Um, so let's go there, let's go to my data files. There's my Peric, and there you can see if it's correctly formatted, it would nicely lay it out like that. That's just a comma separated file. Um, so you have a couple of tools which will help you make sure your formatting is right. I have a final year student who's working on this and he found that if you try to just edit the file in here that I give you, there's a risk it will introduce lots of non-visible characters. So that is from beginning to end, the changes and the code that you would need to work with and adapt.